I'm going to do a little bit more about branching, joining, and structuring your story. So um, last time we were uh, looking at uh, nesting choices. So we had like a first level of choice um, here, and then um, we were uh, nesting choices inside of choices, and we were very careful to indent our content with a tab here, uh, and then also joining our inner choices and our outer choices. So this showing how we can make kind of a branching flow that nonetheless like stays sane and goes back into a main line. Uh, I want to teach another uh, uh, technique here that you can use alongside this. Um, but actually first I want to do a quick little um, show of the inky editor and uh, when we're talking about an indentation you know it can be really annoying to like tab and I get this all right, you know, from line by line. So here's a really cool trick that works across the editor. If you hold down Option and drag, you can actually band select multiple lines. And so here I can just do that. And now I can actually press Tab, Tab and move the whole thing. I can do Delete, Delete. I can even like just type freely here. So, you know, what if, if you know, if all of these were Poirot lines, I can do that. So that's pretty cool. Um, I can also, so anyway, just wanted to show show you um, that trick. I use it all the time in this editor and, and all the editors that are based on it. Um, I'm trying to remember if there's another one, trick sort of similar to that. Well, um, and, and then th like the other kind of corollary to that is if you want to jump, jump ahead by one word, you use option forward. So now, um, and I can also use that to select. So if I wanted to like just select these two names, I could band select them. And then if I hold option, when you see, and I press right arrow, I move to the end of the word. So if it, and if I combine that with option shift, now I've got Poirot and Christie selected here. And so that if I want to replace both of these and make them be lines by Frank, I could just do that. Um, so these are the sorts of little things that are really nice about working with a text format because you can kind of like pretty easily um, quick things. Uh, uh, like edit your text, et cetera, right? We also have Command F and we have uh, Find and Replace here. Um, so I can, you know, select all the Christie lines. And then um, I think there's a way to do replace on these, but I don't actually, I haven't actually been using it. Is it Command Option F? Ah, that's it. Command Option F. Uh, now lets me make all of my Christie lines frank. Um, and, uh, or maybe I had to click all first. That didn't actually seem to work. All. Yeah, okay. Command option F again. And now I can replace all. Cool. So now, okay. Got it. It's actually clicking this all button now. Um, also, for those who are super precocious, we have regexes here too, which I don't wish on my worst enemy to have to learn, but it is a way you can like very precisely um, select things like only... A to Z capitals followed by a comma, like these sorts of things. Yeah, so this is a regex that says only capital letter A to Z followed by a comma, <laughs> and it selects that. And so then I could literally say like, everyone is Frank. Everyone is Frank! Okay, um, okay, really, really got off track there. So just, just want to show you that Inky is, is an editor that has a lot of helpful tools for you. Okay, cool. So knots and stitches. So uh, we said this is a stitch. It starts with triple equals and you can think of it as a section of content. I'm sorry, this is a knot. This is a knot, triple equals, section of content. I can make another knot here. Uh, maybe they say like, where did they do it? Because uh, you know, maybe this is a game of clue. Um, and knots need some content or done. Um, and like, you know, normally when we're working through this, we were kind of flowing from top to bottom, right? We, when the store, when the interpreter is reading through this, it's, it's, you can really think of it as stepping down like a human reading a page. And then it's only when it reaches special characters, does it do something other otherwise, right? So we start at the top of the page, we divert to the whodunit not, we jump in there. And then this starts at the top and it reads Poirot, next line, nothing, next line, Chris, uh, Christy says really and then I hit these choices it knows to stop and then as soon as I select one of these it does it goes right back right it starts at uh, it starts here and it starts moving down the knots are are, are kind of a different idea because they they like chunk 
the content. They, they basically make this a totally separate section from everything that came above. Um, um, there's, you know, the only way we're going to get into here from outside is if we divert into it, right? So there's no way this is done. I can't, if I like were to put a gather here, it does not, it does not know where to gather from. There's no, there's no way we're getting here without a divert. So let's just say, um, now our story flows from who done it right into where did they do it? And so now you can see on the right side, we're now in the new knot. Um, and this is great. Um, this also means that you can have special, uh, basically instead of like deeply nesting branches in here, um, you can create special branches and divert to them from deep within. So like here where we say a gasp was heard in the room, I could divert to a new knot called gasp. Uh, actually, let's just say I divert to uh, where do they do it. So I can type where, and um, actually if I just hit, you'll see it, it's, it, it's aware that this uh, area already exists, so I can just hit tab. Um, and this is important because if I, um, to ink like anything from a the wrong uh, capitalization or um, a missing character, com completely breaks it, right? You'll see as soon as I change the uppercase D to lowercase D, it says divert target not found. Where did they do it? Like the, this is welcome to computer programming, right? It's very, very specific about uh, the details, especially of names and syntax. So um, now if and only if I go uh, down that branch, uh, where I say I doubted him, and then I say I'll show you the bloody handkerchief. Now uh, it says how horrifying, and then rather than jumping down to the um, this gather or this gather, the divert is like what we call a go to in uh, other programming languages. It's uh, it's it's just it's hijacking the flow and uh, taking it to a totally different place. Like everything everything that would normally happen. Uh, it just doesn't reach there. It's like, um, we call this the ink interpreter and the, or oh, sorry, we sometimes call this the ink runtime. So the ink runtime says, okay, I, I'm going, going to where they did, where did they do it? And the story flow continues from here. So that's again, just a special case of using diverts, uh, to divert the story flow to another place. So, um, this is, uh, using knots, uh, is one way to avoid your story just becoming a giant nested mess um, that really, really won't scale because sometimes you just, you have like a new chapter, shall we say, or a new conversation. And this is where it can make sense to say, okay, I want to start fresh, unindented, right at the top. Um, so, so that we remember, um, like that we're actually writing pretend story here. Let's have Poirot say, so tell me this, uh, Ms. Author. Where did the crime take place? Um, and there we go. On the right side, um, we go from how horrifying to where did the crime take place. Um, and if we hadn't taken this choice, if I go back and say muddy footprint, I think you can uh, kind of predict what's going to happen. We go to, um, so I'll alt click, remember to kind of jump to where I was in the script. Um, I all clicked on muddy, now uh, muddy bootprint, how horrifying. I thought you might say so, that's the gather. Then the outer gather, let's just focus on the evidence, shall we? Then we go to the divert, and here we are, and where do they do it? So uh, this is uh, really, really important, and you can structure your content a bunch of different ways, right? Sometimes these knots um, will just be a... Uh, you know, just a little hint to yourself of like, what's the topic of conversation here? Or what's the area? You know, you'll, you'll come up with your own scheme that makes sense. But um, Ink also offers you another uh, related notion called a stitch, which I think can really help. So, and we use these heavily in uh, the game that we're working on. So uh, I might as well explain that here. So a stitch is the same as a knot, except it lives, lives inside of a knot. You could think of it as a like sub, sub knot. Um, a, a subsection of the story. So I like to use these to group, uh, I use, like to use knots to group like big pieces of story and then stitches are little like conversations inside them or little topics inside them. So if I were to restructure this story, I might say that my like 
my parent not would be like, it's not a whodunit. Like this is the end part of the story when um, it's really coming to a head. So let's call this sort of the like, uh, the mystery climax, or like climax of the story. Um, actually, so I'll replace uh, who done it. Um, find all of those. Command Shift F. Replace them with climax the story. Replace all. Okay. So now I went from a working state to a working state. So that's my knot. And then uh, I want to make a stitch that corresponds to the different sections. So I would here say, um, let's call this section uh, like the culprit. Oh, let's call it the reveal. Um, and then this part we'll call the, but where did it happen? Oh, and I'm again being bad. I should, I'm going to copy this. I'm going to wind that back. I'm going to command shift F uh, to replace where did they do it with the where did it happen. Uh, replace all. Okay. And then I'm going to turn this from a knot into a stitch. So what this means uh, is basically that the reveal and but where did it happen are both stitches that live underneath climax of the story. So that might not make sense um, if you haven't done a lot of computer programming or why this is important. But think of this as like a climax of the story as a uh, maybe like a, a volume and it, and the reveal being a chapter in a single volume, if that makes sense, right? This is the outer grouping. This is the inner grouping. And that uh, is powerful because it means, A, I don't have to worry about the reveal being a unique name across my entire story. It means I only have to worry about the reveal. You know, because like maybe book three has a has a has its own reveal, right? Um, so uh, actually, maybe that's even a better way to like think of this is like call this like book one is our knot, and then, you know, the reveal is the reveal of book one. Um, and, uh, but the, the thing to note here is that these, um, you know, I was saying like a, a stitch or a knot is like a section that the story doesn't flow out of it um, unless you divert to it. That's what's happening here on line four now is book one is starting. We start at the top of the knot. But then it doesn't know where to go after this. And so it's saying I'm, I've run out of story. So we uh, actually need to divert to one of our knots here. And I'll choose to divert to the reveal. So, um, you know, and then we go to the reveal. We do everything that we've just seen. We divert to, but where did it happen? And uh, because we're inside this same knot, it knows exactly where to go. Um, so uh, what does this get us? This gives us a lot of ways to structure like pretty complex stories. So now in a totally different file or right here, I can set up another knot called book two. Um, and this knot can uh, have its own uh, reveal. Um, and uh, that's a stitch. So it has one equal sign. And here, you know, the butler did it this time. Um, and I can maybe, maybe, like, maybe I want to go straight to the reveal of book two um, it, from the end of my first story. So I just I was just writing done to just sort of tell ink like hey book two is done, uh, and now instead of ending at the end of book one, I can divert not to done, but to book two, and I can specifically divert to a stitch inside of a knot. So book two dot the reveal tells ink uh, I don't want to go to my reveal, which is what, if I, if I actually told it to go here, that's by default what it would, 
what it would do. That's what it would think. It would think, oh, okay, I have uh, the review. I'm in book one right now. Uh, and from this point on line 25, if you say go to the reveal, it's going to go to the reveal here by default. Um, that's why it's nice to be able to specify what book I want. So I can say, go to book one, the reveal, if I want to be very specific, or if I want to go to the book two reveal, and uh, I have to be more specific. I have to say, uh, go to this knot, I'm sorry, this stitch, the reveal inside of book two, this knot. Um, so this is a really, really great way to um, separate your story into kind of coherent chunks that you can reason about. And that way, when you think about book one, you can think of always starting here. And then later on, as you're writing your story, you know, maybe something comes before the reveal, which is like the, the setup, sorry, the setup. Uh, you know, this is where, this is where the body is found. Um, and then that, you know, that can lead to the uh, reveal. And, uh, and then maybe I don't do this here. Um, this is actually how I prefer prefer to do things. I don't think it's I don't love putting content right in the top of knots. You can do it, and it will treat it um, as if it was a stitch, and just sort of like flow through it. But I I actually think it's much nicer to just use at least this is what I've been doing uh, to just use knots as um, grouping mechanisms as like a container, and then put all my writing inside of stitches. So in this sense, at the very beginning of my story, because this is what kicks it all off. This is literally the, the where, where the whole story starts. Um, instead of diverting to book one, I would divert to book one, the setup. And, um, and that's how my story flows now. Now we jump straight into here. It says this is where the body is found. Then it diverts to the reveal. Chrissy says, really? And, uh, you know, then it flows down to, but where did it happen? Um, where did it happen has this line and then we start book two. So you can see how I'm wiring up like a kind of a complex flow. Um, and this makes it easy for me to easier for me to restructure things by like doing what I just did where I added a new stitch in here. Um, okay. So to recap, um, stitches are sub knots. Uh, they, every stitch must live inside of a knot. Um, both stitches and knots are simply ways to name a section of content and group it. And so um, once you have this name, then you can use uh, diverts, these arrows, to redirect the story there. Um, and you can do a lot of things with these um, that I'll, I can kind of talk about in, in later sections. But, you know, sometimes uh, knots or, or diverts could link back to earlier parts of the story. You know, so if you if you wanted to, you could use I'm using them for books here, but you could use um, a knot as a let's say a, a building and a stitch as a room, and that would be a way to organize and think. Okay, that you know, Agatha's house has a bathroom, Poirot's house has a bathroom, and here's a way that I can um, using diverts and stitches move between these rooms and sort of link. You know, you can loop back around. Uh, I guess is what I'm saying, and um, structure quite a lot of different setups using um, this basic two layer system. Um, okay, that's the recap. Thanks for watching. More to come soon.